Let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this chance to meet together and to think about the sacrament. We thank you for the gift of the Eucharist. We ask for your help to understand more deeply, more fully what you've done for us and for us. May this conversation come to a close meeting. This is the idea of help. We entrust you the hands of our Mother as we say again. Praise the Lord, Jesus, and the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. These bells were earlier every day. It's three minutes over this time. What? People think I'm late. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you just sure. <laughs> 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 Article 44. Participating in the Mass. <laughs> With this in mind, what liturgy had come this last time? Looked at liturgy that is the public worship of God and the people. In this case, with the sacrifice, we offer the sacrifice of the cross. With this in mind, this is why we want to pay liturgy, especially that the Eucharist can do so well. It's a well known fact that one of the aims of the Second Vatican Council was to foster full active and constant participation in the Church of Rites. This is in many cases been misunderstood as to some sort of collaboration, which at points will quietly take up some role in the church. This is not what the phrase means for. The meaning it said each person is involved in liturgy is exercised in his priesthood by eternally engaged with liturgy and path to law. In other words, this be actually associated with liturgy. That intended the listening, the readings, and prayers to the church and the world. So, prayer to receive full communion. Our heart must be engaged with a no word or gesture should be in a pattern, but rather love and devotion. When this takes place, the same liturgy forms hearts and souls, and probably other things for the Lord. And raise Christians for Christian living. They are prepared to go forth with liturgy, probably strike the word of God in the world. This is why it's important for each person to know these doing the liturgy, to be familiar with it, and enter into it fully, actively, and consciously. This is true for both the liturgy and the lay. Conscious and active. <laughs> so this is a phrase that goes back to St. Pius X, that is repeated by, by other popes since then, uh, taken up then in the Vatican Council. Um, active is perhaps better translated as actual or real. The original term of Pius X. It says actual participation, but it's often translated as active participation. And the reason why it's active rather, rather than another word can be as opposed to passive. If we look at some of the older textbooks, or the older books on the Mass, the question will be asked is simply enough to be there physically. The enormous own on at the Mass of Titan. And the answer is no. You go to the Mass deliberately ignoring what's going on, deliberately not on your cell phone, you know, read the book, or daydreaming, or deliberately ignoring what's going on. 
haven't really said mass. Haven't really gone to mass. The Pope's point, the Church's point, is we're called to take a real part in what's going on. Each of us, as a member of the body of Christ, a member of the baptized, has a role. We're doing it. Remember last time we talked about the temples, there's going to be the, the pagan temple and the Christian temple. Mm -hmm. What was the main difference in the in where the sacrifice took place? The first outside. And who was on the inside in the pagan temples? The priests of the living. And what was where where was the if this were organized of like the Jewish temple, uh, there were three gates of the Jewish temple. The name of the people said would be what in the Jewish temple? The court of the priests. The, the court of the priests and section of the holy of holies. You know, the communion rail gate, this, this gate, the doors of the main church, doors to the outside. Uh, <laughs> emphasize each of us has a role. Lit liturgy is the act of the community. It's a sacrifice of people. Now, we, we do these different roles of that sacrifice. We do different positions of that sacrifice. Um, there's a difference between the characters and the priests, and the people, and the priests. But we all have a real role. We're called to exercise that role, and within that role, offer the sacrifice to our Lord. Now, the point of sacrifice is to what? What's, what's the main goal of every sacrifice? Honor God or adore God. Yeah. And so every one of us has a role of honoring and adoring God. Every one of us has this place. Now, if we decide not to adore God, most of us, <coughs> all of us, it's not going to thank God for the reality. Right? If it's tomorrow this church will be closed down, it won't happen. Tomorrow it's going to be closed down. God's going to be adored somewhere. But it's not going to affect God. But it will affect us. If any individual person in the pew decides to, to not go to Mass, or decides to not, go, not participate in Mass, but they should, the Lord is going on, daydream, sit there and whatever. Uh, you can call it book. Leave early. Leave early. Uh, is that going to change the mass? No, the mass is still mass. But what will affect is their own engagement and their own ability to worship God. What's beautiful about the mass is that God is not going to have a living. Christ is not going to have a living. Right? It's Christ's sacrifice. All the heavy lifting of the sacrifice, the liturgy, of the mass is being done by our Lord. He's providing the love, the adoration, the honor, the goodness. And we get to join it. We get to participate in that. We get to share in that. We have something real and beautiful and valuable to offer our God and all. Something really good to offer God that matters. And so this means we're not, not there simply as bumps on the wall. But it doesn't mean we have to be doing something publicly visible. There is unfortunately an error, this activism, that tries to find bad roles for people. You have to be an option, you have to read, you have to do things with this, you have to do many things, otherwise it doesn't really happen. And that's false. That's where it says misunderstood. Right, mm -hmm. right. Because what's the main activity of going on in mass? Adoration. So adoration, so being busy is not the heart of adoration. Adoration comes from the inside. Right? So you attitude toward God, love you feel toward God. And so you can be sitting there quietly in the pew and doing nothing externally. Of being participating in the truest, deepest sense. You can also do an thing and participate as well. But, but, but the point is, the heart of what you're doing there, the way you participate most fully, the full cause of acting, I mean, understand what's going on, doing it deliberately, completely, as part of the mass, while your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. You're doing there fully, really, 
is to love the Lord our God and do so with His Son Jesus. That's what we're doing. And that's the point. So if someone is so busy in the Mass of getting to worship God, even if they're active their activities, not participating in the Mass where they should. And if someone's sitting in the pew, but ignoring what's going on in the Mass, they're not full of active either. So the goal of what you do is to the state first is to Worship God, join Him with the Son of His Christ, just be the, the activity, the action above, given by the body of Christ. First, with Christ ahead. Um, trying to think, well, I should add something here, or we'll talk about later on, I don't know what you want. Remember. Um, <clears throat> And we'll hope it comes again that <laughs> What does this look like then in real life? Practically speaking, how do you engage constantly active, actually actively fully? Could be. So the church suggests the main way of doing this, the first way of doing this, is to attach to all the words. Right? Look at the reading, there's the readings, you know, respond to the prayers, join in the prayers. But make them your own. One of the things we have to be careful about is to be so focused on the words of the prayer and the meaning of the prayer. Uh, this is especially, I think, a danger for priests because we're very careful what we say. You know, where you, where you start saying words, where you're talking to. You know, that, that these are, are words spoken to God, you're given the words you have to say, you're told what to say, you're told what to, say. You're told what to do, with your folks are the great kid. But you remember you're talking to somebody in that oration. It's not just saying these words, but you're speaking to someone. Yes. Certainly. Yeah. Yes. Whenever you're saying all the things that you say, amen, amen, like a lot, but the congregation doesn't say it with you, are we supposed to audibly be saying it? Or during, the, like, during the during the canon, It's all just we were interested yes. your person of Yes. So so during the actual consecration prayers, no. Other than that, yes. After the hour of father, no. <laughs> <laughs> if someone says it there, is it going to be sitting or not? <laughs> but it's not in there. Uh, there's another prayer that the amen is after another prayer. Uh, the, but, but yes. I didn't know because I just heard it so many times and I'm like, yeah, and I've seen a few churches, a few parishes, there's emphasis on everyone should follow along with the missiles. But we should get rid of the missiles and people should listen and pay attention to the mess. Well, and so there's the thing. So the first missiles were printed but I think twice. And so because of that, there is debate. It's not traditional. But it's helpful. But it also is right. Hey, a personality. <laughs> right? We well, get so involved in the page number or the words, you're not paying attention to what's happening at the same time. And so, really, and this is the back to this point here, you know, is that this is the next point here is sometimes this is not the best way. Perhaps it's impossible. So, for example, you know, you're a young mother and have a baby crying. 
Trying to do this is not going to be very easy. It's made that be possible. We're just saying. We have a personality um, where we're, we're trying to follow along and say the prayer is acting as right. The personality or sickness or the circumstances, taking care of a small child, for example, uh, is there not the best way to speak? It might be. It might not be. <laughs> the heart is what matters. And so if you're in a circumstance, your personality, or you know, where there's a better way to do this, that you should do. And so if you look at some of the older books, they'll talk about other methods. Even uh, Pius XII, in his letter on the Mass, uh, discusses praying rosary. He says, the first way is said prayers. He says, if you can't say the prayers, pray right, rosary. They're not praying a rosary instead of the Mass, not ignoring the Mass. They're useless, those prayers that are to the prayers of the thing of Christ's passion, is way to understand and recognize their influence. <laughs> What was that? Is that for Latin At that time, it was for the Latin Mass. Yeah. The Dominicans. Um, because you, well, I guess they did have the English. They did have candles at that point. They did have other things. A lot of people spoke Latin back then, too. It was excited in schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people, people were to follow it. Um, so a lot of, I, don't, I don't think it was simply a question of the Latin. Um, I think it's a question of personalities and, and where people are at. So honestly, I remember uh, a few years ago talking to one of my brothers when I was in my young teens. And he, he's an animal in my he's early 20s. We were talking about the Latin Mass, and I was saying, you know, I like the Latin Mass, I understand it. I can't follow along. He says, well, Nathaniel, do you really understand the Mass in English? <laughs> well, you know, you got me there. <laughs> you know, I don't know the words. I know what's happening. But do I understand what's happening? No. Because it's divine mystery. It's divine power. It's the divine glory. And sometimes I think we get this idea, I should have the idea, you know, where... Because it's our own language, we don't understand it. We own it. But there's a mystery there, a depth of the mystery that we don't begin to grasp as divine word and divine power. And if we're joining again as well, the same thing will happen. So even in the English Mass, I think there are times, I don't understand it quite as much as we think. Or again, I mean, if you're sick, you have a headache, you can't, you're, you're deaf. Um, unfortunately, there's a number of people in this parish who can't hear very well. Um, what you say? Yes. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> and your priest talks fast, too. Yeah. Um, but because of that, there are times where, where if we focus so much on the words, we can miss them all. And so Pius the Twelfth, was his said there, there may be other methods to use to join the Mass. As long as there are methods to join the Mass, not other methods to go to the Mass, and, and to simply have the Mass in the background. That's not what you want to do. If you're, if you're praying the Rosary and going to the Mass, you're doing the wrong thing. If you're thinking about the mystery of what Christ's life and the loving Christ going into Christ's heart, because you can't hear, you can't see, you can't understand what's going on, but you're joining into the actual reality. Great. Now again, the first one is this. This is usually, for most people, the best one. But it might not be the best way for you. That's all my stuff, that's all The best way for you might be a prayer rosary. It might be to think about the death of the cross. It might be simply recognize the Lord our Lord. The, the participation comes about joining your heart, your mind, your, 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 everything you have. Loving Christ, loving God, going into that sacrifice of the cross. Offer that to the Father with the priest and through the priest, and offering yourself as well. That's what stays with us. That make sense? Um, 
the point of this then is this is this transformer of hearts and souls. This is where God's love. And this is that becoming that priest. You know, the, it's the poor of the priest of the people, sir. Because of the fact you have know, a priestly role and a role of the land. The role of the Lord God, the role of the Lord again. Again, it's Christ now. And then it's first his. But by showing up and going there, don't be, not, they're not there just to watch and look what go past. Nor are you there to be talked to. You're there to join in. You're there to love God, to worship God, and to join in the offering of Christ. The priest, with the priest, with your brothers and sisters. I said, you give your soul. Give your soul. Heart, mind, soul, strength. Personal. means not just the Mass, but it's a bigger word including any official prayer, the divine office, any of the sacraments, also the Mass. But the liturgy includes many other things. But for liturgy, especially the Eucharist, especially the Mass, the significance of having a good, beautiful way of celebrating the liturgy. Also is the art of celebrating, the art of the Quran. This is, in fact, closely related Anticipation, liturgy, that 16 is told at this point. Mm -hmm. Party heart. The primary way. Foster participation of the people of God, sacred right, is the proper celebration of the right of self. The art of the Brahman, the art of the celebrated record, is the best way to ensure that actual is a possible active participation, actual participation. The art of the Brahman, the fruit of faithful adherence to the spiritual norms, all the rituals. Indeed, for 2,000 years, this way of celebrating has Sustained faith like faith all believers. All take part in the celebration of the people of God, or a priesthood, a holy nation. This refers to the various rites, the various parts of Mass. Before, you know, I'm going to keep reading and comment first because he was on his finest, the uh, next paragraphs. Uh, so rather than spending it and repeating it, let me go read it through further down and go back. Without following any sort of ritualism, which would be simply saying and doing this in the back for its own sake, we'd rather strive to fill all that the church asks of us in liturgy, to ask their glory to God and salvation of souls. It's too great part of Christ's mission. Each small nuance of liturgy can serve to grant purpose that we not liturgy expects. But speaking of God appreciate the point of sight, this will make this point in the body. Therefore, when he celebrates the Eucharist, he must serve God with people, with dignity and humility, by his bearing the way he pronounces the divine words, must convey the faith of the living presence of Christ. In other words, all effort should be made to express the living presence of Christ, even the way we speak and pray and carry ourselves in the same order. The admonition of John the Baptist is fitting this regard. He must increase, and I must decrease. 
May the 16th emphasized the same fact by showing our political liberation along with the Paraguay Beauty. Today, the liturgy, the splendor of God's glory, is a pencil world view. The true is love of God. Divinity revealed itself to us in the past in this world. The beauty of the liturgy is part of this mystery. It's a divine expression of God's glory in a certain sense, a glimpse of heaven around. Beauty that is not mere decoration, but rather an essential element of the spiritual action. This is an attribute of God Himself and His revelation. These considerations can make us realize that cameras is needed. If the original actions reflects and makes blood. Our obedience for the church asks of us the liturgy of particularly in mass is not simply a matter of what the rules. But rather, I allow the beauty of the liturgy to express the beauty of God Himself, albeit through sensible and sacramental songs. Attentiveness developed the specific nature of the rite, expressed by the recognition of the nature of the Eucharist at the beginning and the part of the ministry, a docile openness to receive this kind of gift. This is why the church is so strict when it comes to changing all this liturgy. The nobody can be a priest, man, or whoever did anything liturgy to on the holy. And so, the purpose of all the church and norms and rubrics, because it refers to the most documents, are not to be seen as a hindrance for creativity and expression, but rather ways in which we can express the love of God. More than this, they also ways to which the church shows forth the glorious splendor of God, and Jesus Christ present in the world of sacrament of the the church of the lost in this life is something precious we should enjoy through the fall. To do otherwise would render that they will receive of the sacraments and the fullness of the sin of Catholic liturgy which they have a right to have that. Okay, a lot of them. But I wanted to go through it first we talk about. Where does the Mass come from? The Last Supper? The Last Supper? Good. But that's number two because it actually is before that. But good. So, where's the last time about? <coughs> Passover. Good. What else? Crucifixion. Good. Cross. <laughs> Short? There's a right to ascension, full past the mystery. Anywhere else? That is zero. <laughs> Anywhere else? Does the church add anything? Does the pop add anything to the mass? What about the readings? So there's tradition, the written of the apostle of the church. Well, there are parts that, that were chosen by the church and the apostle, right? But sometimes later on. Um, and I'll even say even later on, um, folks. Because there's certain, there's certain uh, celebrations, certain ceremonies they have happen to, to uh, like for example, um, some of the processions you might see for, at the uh, the celebration of the Eucharist on Holy Thursday. Mm -hmm. that, so that's a very late procession of the Eucharist, it's about the ninth century. Or late in the third, so the ninth century. Uh, so the processions you see, you know, about eight by seven. Um, so they weren't part of the tradition, they weren't. But they say a roots even in the past, but they were added in wrong. And so you can tell you kind of dates, you know, with, um, 10 15 of the date the creed was added in the past. Um, so we have a date for the addition of the creed. <clears throat> Going back to this, who gave us the Passover? Jewish people, but 
First of all, um, right, and again, there were, later on, there were some ceremonies added by the Jewish people as well. So they did have some of their leaders add ceremonies, all this add ceremonies. But the heart of it comes from God. That supper, the heart of it comes from God. This obviously comes from God as well. This stuff. Jesus was actively participating in that. I mean, the Holy Trinity, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. God, Trinity, same, same, same one. <coughs> as of course, also, but also God. <laughs> Jesus is the one that had the curls. Yes. But God the Father was first supposed to involve in that too. It's uh-huh. different ways. Um, he has some parts from human beings. The heart of it is going to come about. There's two things going on here. The first of all is this cannot replace this. This can only express and uh, um, clarify and make more clear what's going on here. Otherwise, you're in the wrong thing. Right? If by impossibility, the church were, were to try to throw something in that would obscure or hide this, this would not be a good addition to the mass. Right? Because it has to flow from this explaining this. What this means then is when we come to mass, it's not simply an expression of my love for God. Even though it's how I love God first, it's the, it, it is the sense way in which I can love God truly. But the Mass is me coming to God and signing, I'm going to love God this way. You'd be blank with the other But it's a structure that I want to be able to go to. <laughs> yeah. Say that one more time. <laughs> I'm not understanding. Even though the Mass is something each of us individually must participate <clears throat> It does not begin with each of us in the And therefore, what's being expressed happening in the Mass doesn't begin with me and is not controlled by me. I'm not in the Mass deciding what happens. It's something that's been given to me that I must adhere to. Participating in the Mass isn't changing the Mass to fit me. It's changing myself with the Mass. Because first of all, the Mass comes from God. Part of it is the action of Jesus Christ. Going back to the Old Testament. But this does not mean that, that therefore our participation is irrelevant. So there's a balance here that you can grasp and understand that, that my sharing it is necessary and important. But at the same time, what I'm doing there isn't changing or making it the expression of myself. And this is something I think they would, we can be in trouble with in a way that people in the past did not have. In the past, there were certain cultural traditions that they were messed with, just because they were Christian. And because by sharing, we, even simple things like the way you dress or the colors you wore in your clothing, um, you did that as a way to express your heritage, and even though it wasn't something you invented, it was an expression of your son. Um, someone tied their mission, tied their roots, tied, that was who they were. If, if you love your heritage, if you love your roots where you come from, expressing those roots, showing those roots, is something, it's not something you invent, it's something you receive and express. But it does express yourself, it does show who you are. It's not something you invent or change. Otherwise, it's not your root Right? 
So if, you, if you're Polish, if you're, if you're Russian, if you're Italian, there are certain things you're going to say and do, certain what kind of food you're going to cook, certain clothes you're going to wear, a tradition to show what to show these things. And if you were to throw them out, are you expressing your heritage? No. You, you, you can you simply invent new ways of doing things and go, well, this is my Polish roots. No. That's not knowing your Polish roots anymore. But that's happening in the church because, because like, I was first in an Irish parish, things a little differently. In Texas, they have like a Spanish parish. In California, they have an interesting parish. <laughs> <laughs> and so, where those things are done, that's not that that's not truly celebrating the mass Yeah. Um, you, in Colorado, they have a donut. <laughs> they do. I mean, they have. They literally have a circle, and the priest kind of turns it a circle and does the math. Is that it's dizzy? Yeah. That was from the seventies. Again, it sounds dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> but this also bristles against what most of society is going through right now. Right, conformity versus independent expression. Right. Uh, um, and what I'm saying is, again, this is, this is exactly, exactly why it's necessary to think about wrestling. Because it's something we've lost in culture. It's something we've got as a culture that, that living your tradition, living your roots, showing your roots, your heritage, is not destroying your own personality. It's not getting rid of your own creativity. It is not. Uh, rejecting who you are. And in fact, inventing it every five months or every year or every you know, moment, if you like it, that's the structure of who you are. That our roots, our traditions, are very much an important part of who we are. And what it means that something in order to express well who we are, we need traditions and roots. Even the human. You know who we are, where we come from, you know, you, you know these, even something as simple as having the rest of us are important. Even something as simple as, you know, the eternal your own Thanksgiving is important. Now, is it, is it important as a mass no. you know, But it's important. You know, these things are important, they express who you are, they don't stifle you, but they help you understand who you are and help you then live free. If that's true, even as something as a turkey dinner, or your grandmother's you know, chocolate cake, or, or your Irish roots, if that's true about those, it's much more true when it comes to worshiping and celebrating the honor of God. Because our roots don't come from ourselves. They're anchor us to give us life, help us connect our us to eternity. The roots go back to eternal life and they extend to eternal. And so the point of this is that celebrating well, the only does is it puts forward what God has done. Not only does it show what God is doing, it also expresses who I am more truly by inventing it every Sunday. If next Sunday I would say, you know what, guys, that's the snowflake liturgy instead. That's not it's the math of snowflake. First of all, when you're sure in this stuff, was portable. By doing that, when we are we losing who we are, by trying to invent who we are every Sunday, we lose who we are. We'll destroy who we are. And so the church is saying, what the bishop is saying, is that there is an art. There is a way to celebrate and not to celebrate. This involves a particular ritual, a particular ceremonies. And it's not that, that the ceremony themselves is the key. Right? We wouldn't get lost in the number of apart of holding your hands, holding your hands in the right place. No, that's not the point. The point is to express and to show what God has done and to bring us to eternal life, which can realize the glory of Jesus. 
But those things one done well when I bring this in express most clearly what these things are. First of all, Christ did them and does them. It's not simply a symbolic thing, but a real thing happening when sacrifices take place. But it's also then, this is how we most truly express understanding from the grips of who we are. We talk about art. And art is something that um, you grow, you develop in, there's a kind of beauty there. Um, somebody who's first learning with the piano might be able to pick out the notes of Beethoven. But a master playing those same notes put, put, put a lot more soul and heart and life into those like music. That, that's the art. The technical notes being played at the right moment at the right time is not an art. The same thing is true with the math. There is art. And so if you get lost in the technical aspects of the notes, it's not the same thing as celebrating the mass well. Now it's a good start. And you can't say the mass well, they don't have notes well. You can't let Beethoven well, they don't have you make up your own notes. But there's more to it than that. The same thing is true with the mass. Is what you're doing, you're doing the celebrate the mass well is beginning with, with the ritual, with the right end, with the rules. Say these things at this moment. Do these things. Act this way. Dress this way. It becomes that if you do what well, it is art, it's practice, and care, and love, and effort. Inside the people, inside the priests, inside the combination together. To do it well, you're, you enter into it in a whole new way. It becomes this profound deep expression. Of the love of God, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ happening for all these things that are history that they prepare and given to us in these words. And just because we're following things given to us, the obedience to them isn't destructive of who we are, it actually expresses and helps us anchor ourselves with ourselves and the Bible from God full. Because the roots come from heaven themselves. Does that make sense? Um, what's being conveyed through this, then, Big Bishop says, according to Benedict, is the presence, the living presence of Christ. We're not simply imitating something that happened a long time ago. We're not simply remembering something that happened in a while. We're showing we understand and believe what's happening is truly real. There is a present sacrifice, present that God is truly there with us. And everything we're doing is to show that and to make it clear to us. And to recognize that God is with us. Emmanuel. The living God, the living Jesus Christ, who loves us, who died for us, who cares for us, who saves us, is with us. We have to join with Him, to be with Him, to love Him, and receive His love. That is the point. Because when we have the living of Christ with us, then we receive life, and healing, and goodness. That we receive from our Lord is healing and, and, and his, his life. Recreating. What was that? Is it like recreating as much as. It's unveiling it. Um, the transfiguration of the mountain. Right? Christ shown forth his beauty, he shows the divine form. Was he receiving the divine glory for the first time? No. He always had it. But he was revealing and showing his divine face. Glimpse of it. No. God 
what's here, whether they believe it or not. If I just believe the Eucharist is real, that's not, it doesn't change that. The liturgy is celebrated well, is an unveiling and a showing of the face of Christ. And through it, because it is to do the rock of sacrifice, it makes present Christ. But the Mass actually causes that presence there, the bread and wine of Jesus. And that the way it celebrated shows them, expresses that, it's a seal. We all join them, we say, we're going to express this and show this and reveal that we'll see God's will. Father? Yes, please. Um, to me, this is kind of like, I see this thing going on because um, like the Latin Mass, it's my understanding that when we have the Latin Mass, all the Masses throughout the world are all the same. And it's there are slight differences, but, but, but yeah, basically. Yeah, it's more the same than they are now. Yes. And so if we can't change it, how come there's been so many changes to it? And they're trying to change it even more. What do you think about that? <laughs> I mean, just, just like in the Bible, yeah. in, the, in the Bible it says that you cannot add or take away from. Right. In Revelation, right. it says you cannot add or take away a word from this scripture. So, if this is the Latin, or if this is the Mass that was given to us, we change it. Adding and taking away? So, yes and no. <laughs> well, that is. Uh, Good answer. <laughs> now that's taking me long. Um, <laughs> the heart never changes. The actual sacrifice never changes. But there are times where we can change certain ceremonies or certain prayers or certain things surrounding that one. Like the wrapping paper, the gift doesn't change, the wrapping paper might. Um, the difficulty is, is it, if it's wrapped badly in such a way that it's not perceived again. Um, but even there, the gift doesn't change. If I were to come to Mass and I'm drunk, I'm more of sin, and I'm preaching heresy, I say the Mass fine. The sacrifice takes place. Yeah. Yes. God. Yeah. Um, and so God worshiped. That will save souls. Now, well, it's hard to see that probably. There'll be a veiling and a difficulty in seeing that, understanding that. The cause great confusion. And then that might cause them to lose their faith. But the reality of the church. Right. Um, <laughs> But then why is there so much emphasis putting on us, put on saying these exact words? Because I know that there's a couple places in the Mass where I learned it differently, and sometimes when I'm really into I say the wrong word, like it was 20 years ago. <laughs> but I'm like, oops. You know, and it, it's distracting to me. It's like, oh, I said the wrong word. You know, like trans, you know. 12 years ago. That's mm -hmm. that, 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 No, but I mean, yeah. you know, I was it 20 years ago. Oh, well, 30 years ago now. I'm old. But, um. Keep it old, though. Yeah, but, um. And then I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be thinking about that word. I should be thinking about what it means and stuff like that. But. And I hear people in the mass, sometimes older people, I hear them say it the old way. Right. Um, well, and so this is exactly the. So, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a grave scandal occurring right now, and there is a Whereby we think we own the liturgy and therefore can make it conform to us. That is a great sin. 
and people can just arrive at what? Um, this matters because the reason why the words matter, the rights matter, is because it doesn't come from us. Right. Okay. So, why does it change? It was changed. So, all history lesson here. Uh, or okay, stuff. So, there are times when certain ceremonies stop at the academy. So, for example, until 1903, I think it was, there were prayers for the Holy Roman Emperor. The Holy Roman Emperor. Because of that very fact, why are we changing? Well, we stopped having the Holy Roman Emperor, it was time to stop praying for it. Yeah. Um, and so at that point, saying those prayers stopped having meaning. Um, not essential, actually. Um, and so, in the Second Vatican Council, which was going on in 1962, the question was perhaps some of the readings in, in Latin were going against the purpose. The purpose is people understand and participate well, be better to have a right of the natural languages. And the reason, yeah, it's through all the the natural. <laughs> With the idea being that people who understand are fully in better. Unfortunately, this is summarizing and making the broad brush. So to take this bit of salt and read up some more. The people in charge of revising this process, one of them is very, very dishonest. His name was it was Adam Balvinini. He was a very dishonest man. Uh, and many of very wicked. Uh, but he had been put in charge of this committee of, I think, six people, I think, he put in charge of revising things. And over the course of 10 years, he convinced the Pope to change a bunch of other things. Um, and so, literally, it would be the evidence where he would go to the Pope and say, the committee has decided together that it would be best to change A, B, and C. So, for example, he came in and said, we want to change the author of Pentecost. Why have an octave? Why do have an octave? They said, that's not important. Get rid of it. Pope said, okay, let's get what it wants. We'll do it. They went to the video and said, the, the Pope wants to change this octave. They said, okay, so the Pope wants to do it. Who is his own son? The evidence did this quite a few things. Many things. Uh, so he's manipulative. Very much so. But I was thinking more generally, because yeah. I was thinking like bigger. It, I understand why they change to the languages that people understand, right. but that means it's in all the languages. So I don't, what I don't understand is why is there so much pushback against the Latin mass now, because it's another language. And so if you can do it in Portuguese and Spanish and whatever. So Why can't you say it in Latin? There is a cynical answer to that. There's not a cynical answer to that. Which one do you want? Truth will set you free. Oh. <laughs> and the answer I think is wrong. I think it's probably the wrong. So, so I, I, I think the, I think it's both answers together. Yeah. Uh, I, I think on the one hand, um, people are afraid that if Latin mass is allowed, um, people will stop going to one and go forward. That the pe people will not like the uh, normal way of doing things. Well, if we have Latin mass at 9 o'clock, I'll go to Latin mass. <laughs> um, I like it. It's, it's, it's just so much more moving. And, and, and so people will claim that celebrating Latin Mass is a rejection of the Vatican Council, which is nonsense. Um, but that is the claim. And so the, the fear is that, that Latin Mass harbors in it a spirit of rebellion and disobedience. Mm -hmm. 
um, which is the clay. It seems to me that if you are that afraid of your liturgy, you don't trust it very well. Um, well, I heard that in paintings now. If you go to Latin Mass, they tell you you can go to Latin Mass, but it doesn't count, and you have to go to Minnesota. That's what some friends told me that. They went to Latin Mass, and they were told, well, this doesn't count for your Sunday Mass, and you have to go to Minnesota. And that is nonsense, and no one can say it. It's not true. Because you can show up your own shit. So the question was, at what point did it stop being mass? Right. And, and the answer is, as long as the words of consecration are said, it's bread and wine, it's mass. Hmm. Hmm. That's the hard part. Is that mm-hmm. So as long as bread and wine, grape wine, wheat bread, not pita bread, not <laughs> you know apple wine, um, not grape juice, not Fruit. Uh, fortunately, I've seen priests try to use fruit wine, it's not uh, grapes, uh, as a cow. Can't use rice wine, can't use apple wine, can't use brandy, it has to be wine, or they grapes. As long as it is words of consecration are said, and as bread and wine is fashioned. But they have to be seen this is my body, this is my body. Yeah. It, it can't be, this is our body, this is Christ's body, it can't be, uh, but yeah. If they just put the clown costume and have puppets on the altar, <laughs> and unfortunately I'll make that up, which I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they say it's the body, this is my body. And you mean this I mean, because there's, if there's like no other place to go, then if there's no other place to go, yes, yes. Um, I would say there might have to be a point where, where they have to be again. If your only option going to mass is the, is the, the priest of the Harry, preaching heresy, mm-hmm. and going there. Is, is so dysfunctional and disruptive of of your prayer life. You might get, you might, or you might get to a point where we're going to mass is an impossible. Um, you don't trust being said or speak how it's being done. Um, you might get to a point where you're excused because you because of the father. I thought that was so last um, And we're not at the time in history that happened. Uh, where the priests in a certain area were all heretics, were all kind of crazy, people refused to go. Mm-hmm. And they kind of always saw people up higher up, but okay, there's a problem there, people aren't going because of. But it can't be just simply excuse I don't know up today, because I was thinking of that. So, but yeah, so it, <clears throat> there might be a point where it gets so bad where you can say, well, I there is no mass. Um, but that'd be pretty bad. Yeah, I'm not talking about the priest where his wife ran free. That'd be annoying. But that's not the topic. Good question. Um, when was this Sacrosanctum Concilium written? Uh, that was 64. That's the one. He says so nobody dying the priest can. And move the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's against that. Yep. Yeah, well, that's the Sacred Council. Right. Absolutely. No, I mean, I mean the whole problem with a lot of this thing is that it's against the church law and 
the church. Christian is it's a yes. But people don't care. We got that on the authority. I do. I love the Well, he's decent. Do you think that adds to the disrespect that sometimes we see? Like people wearing. So this is what it adds to. Celebrate that way? Yeah, the fact I that think. there's changes and it's like, well, it's not that important to keep it the same. It, you can kind of say it this way here and you can kind of say it this way there. It doesn't really matter. And then people start showing up in short shorts and you know, absolutely flips and flip flops. No, absolutely. And absolutely. Because if, 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 the, if the mass is not showing the proper nice presence, right. the people are going to stop believing. Well, see, you know, I've seen a number of churches in Tucson. But there's not even a tabernacle in the church. So nobody's genuinely left me or anything because God's not there. I mean, you know. So they just walk in and sit down. So then when there is a tabernacle, they just walk in and sit down. Right. Because they don't. But only that. Right. 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 And because they've been trained to sell their mess up, they, they've been trained to look at what's happening. Because I know for a little while my grandsons were, were serving at a mass where there was no tabernacle. So then another time they served at a church where there was one, and they was like, the Lord has to get the tabernacle. You know, it's like it was, they were used to the one not being around. When I, when I was serving, um, I was a young boy. Uh, I remember seeing there was a couple of priests. There were one priest walking to the church, walked past half hour, trying to give a dog and walk along. Other priests came every day for And I said, there was for the people but for a couple of years. The people, the same people, you know, when they were with the priests who would daily flood the daily flood. The priests who would not have an eye, they would just have an eye. So that's what I know, Because that translates what you do and how you, how you act. This is why it's hard. Because how you act, what you do, how you celebrate, if you have care of these things, people are going to say they're supporting the care of it. If you don't treat it well, you're going to say, well, why don't you treat it well? This is important, it's not a big deal. And then they're going to be confused about this and not see. And it ends up with the fact where I have people argue with me here in this church um, that the Mass is not about us. It's not about us. No, people, people are telling me it is about us. It is about us. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. No. <laughs> but, I know. but I have people tell me it was, and they, they're mad that I was telling them it wasn't. So those were the people that thought it was about them? Yes. And they left. You're here to entertain. But there's just things about us. I'm not a Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm not here for myself at all. Exactly. Yeah, I'm here for myself, but it's for God. Like, if this was, was my way of worshiping, I'd not be this. Absolutely. It's still your soul, I guess. Like, no, man, it's your soul, but, but no, it's what he's asked for. It's not. The you analogy know, I'd like to use is my niece's birthday cards. I have a bunch of them this part of the, at the age of the princesses, so it's pink and purple, glitter, and, you know. Yeah. If I would go to the birthday party, wait a minute, I don't like purple. I don't like princesses. I mean, this is the point. Yeah. Tell about me. Yeah. I don't like this type of cake. <laughs> I, I go for that, not because, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and so we reason why we have to do this the right way is because this way is asked for it, this is how we show who he is. And that's what God asks for. Yeah. That's how we do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. Do it this way. Do this. Right? Just starting with the Passover, where God appeared to Moses and do it this way. Last supper he took that and sanctified it. And, and then the, 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 the church made our souls finish it. And so we've changed it. We're ignoring this man. 
Now, the little, little things here and there are sort of a change over time. But in, in essence, it shouldn't change. And your library? <laughs> That the creed drives me. I have to have to use the book every time. There's only about because I used to go to the East Rite Church and they had their own translation of the vernacular. Mm -hmm. And they also translated it twice differently. So I have like five different translations I've seen for you. And so I was like, I, I, get, I don't forget. I'm reading it every time. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Do you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to mention something. After our last class, I saw something on the census of the alien. I don't know if saying that right. But they were talking about liturgy. They said, oh, this is a little great. So we were talking about liturgy. But they made reference to a professor, Andrea Murillo, who's supposedly an expert on liturgical matters. And he talks to the current Pope. And he's the one. They said that it's promoting the changes in the mass literature. We have female deacons and then same sex marriages and the sponsors. What happened? Well, the Pope did just say recently that no female deacons and no one's at the Yeah, that was. But we live in very strange times. Um, and our responsibility is not to go straight through the times, to remain the times. Our responsibility is to stick to Christ, who does not change. Um, and if we're asked to do something that's not as big of a deal, so tomorrow we're probably the public pay for or whatever, I'll pay for whatever. But not a big deal. If tomorrow mass, not to say mass at all, I'm going to say mass. Right? There's a difference between, you know, if all of a sudden had to go over or, 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 or blue instead of purple, you know, silly, not a big deal. If we're told to, to get rid of, of, of the tabernacles, that's a big deal. Um, yeah, I've heard that Bishop Strickland is still able to offer mass in yeah. his hotel room or maybe yeah. a private mass. Oh, where, where does he? Uh, uh, at this point, as far as I understand, he can take anything any problem with it. He's still a bishop. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's still a bishop, he's still a bishop with standing, he's, he's just retired. He just yeah. doesn't have a church. Uh, uh, I guess that they, they were, the Pope was saying it's okay for transgender couples to be godparents. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I mean, there's just a kind of crazy stuff. That is causing scale. That is causing scale. Um, remember, coordinates on the 12 of the anyway. I'm recording that. Oh, and again, nice. tonight. Um, honestly, so our Holy Father is our Pope. Oh, the Pope is our, our Holy yeah. Father. He's our, he's our Holy Father. Yeah. He, he is our Pope. The leader of our church. Right, right. You all respect and love. Right, right. right now, is acting like an abuse of man in well, Yes. Um, he, he is being abusive and he is hurt. Mm -hmm. He's still our fault. And so we love him, we respect him, we pray for him, we honor him. How much of this does he say from his chair? This is this, what? Oh, that's not a, not a, that's a problem. Uh, so, so, but. He's still our father, he's not in his chair. Uh, so, no, he's, he's, nothing's been changed officially. But the problem is things are being exempt in such a way that nobody knows that or cares about. Where if, when people are saying the truth, they're being punished. When people are, are telling lies, they're being promoted and praised. You don't have to teach anything. You're teaching by the action. Um, but we can still pray that, is, that Christ comes into his heart and yes. the, 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 yeah, I'm off the head. That that's so he, he still has time to <laughs> He's still your father. Yeah, and He's see still your what father. see what people who are advising him are telling. No, absolutely. Pray for him, love him, care for him. Uh, but don't pretend he's a little guy. It's not. Can he be removed? 
Nope. No. There's no one about that I have that was stuck in there. What happened? Oh, that's it. I believe there's room where no one knows. There's not really anything that needs to be public. We didn't even realize this last away at the beginning of the year. We saw something about us a couple months later. It was like, oh, they didn't spend five minutes on that. And yeah. they usually lie in state for a week and show it, show it or leave on that. And it just seemed to put me lost over the week. I mean, so much stuff I'm getting in my head to believe in, but um, I mean, I just felt, give me discernment. I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I don't want to hear all this. <laughs> and I think, honestly, I think that's the way to go. I mean, because of that, you don't like not change is happening in Rome. I mean, you don't like the change is happening. Well, we don't even know if what some of the stuff people are saying is even true. Exactly. And so what that means then is our job is to take care of our families in this country. That's our job. So let Rome take care of itself, let Portland take care of itself, and pray for them all. But to worry about it, so so you know, honestly, I, I think this day and age is not helpful spiritually, not helpful to us always. Um, and so our job is, is to love God, our job is to serve God, our job is to do this the best we can. If you do that, we're gonna be okay. You start worrying about wrong and then start, start following every rumor and that every every lie or everything's being said, we're gonna be all we're gonna be hurting here. Are never going then at the end of the survey. Even some of the people that are supposed to be in the know, sometimes I just, you know, watch this. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't want to watch this. No, no, I, no, I, don't, I, don't, I think a lot of it isn't really incredible for us. I think a lot of it becomes very much like us. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a reason why I'm very careful. Like, I'll say it for both. A lot of it doesn't affect us. I mean, it might affect us, but I do know that it doesn't change anything for us at all. Well, like, we were talking about Bishop Strickland, and I think the way he's handling things is very admirable. Absolutely. I mean, he yeah. just says that the Pope is the Pope, and I respect him, yeah. and he so it's it's his decision, yeah. and. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I'm really, that has been really inspirational for me to see him be such an amazing person and rise above. Yeah. I just read something that kind of talking about where we are a while back, a couple weeks ago, I was talking to her about the Pope to keep it in perspective, even though we've heard the narrative and the things he said things we may disagree with. The bottom line is, he hasn't changed anything. He's never come down officially changed what we've done in the church. He has, uh, but he is allowing things to be done bad with what we've done. He is punishing yeah. people for doing the right thing. Right. Uh, and so, people uh, that don't. <laughs> but, no, that has been taken officially. Yeah, no, it has been officially uh, so keep it in perspective sometimes. No, that, absolutely, in the end, Christ is in charge. In the end, Christ is in charge, and we follow Christ. Well, today I saw something that he's quiet. I don't think it's changed. I think he had the flu, he's not quiet. Oh, I heard that he had pneumonia or something, and he'd been in the hospital, and... I heard he was getting out of it, getting better. Okay. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? The Lord's in charge of one of them. The Lord knows that. And all of them will be okay. That's, that's it from there. <laughs> we'll pick up in Article 47 next week. Uh, a couple of things. And you know, we read it and talk about it. We'll pick up at 47. Uh, let's close with a prayer. Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, of that. Heavenly Father, mercy upon us and upon our church. Be each of us here present with all of our parish family. We're closer to you, we're faithful to your church, we're obedient to our holy call, and we're loving you in all things. You all that we say to be your Lord. Glory be to you, Lord, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world of God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, peace. Amen.